Hi there, I'm Stephen Crony. Welcome to another watercolour demo. Today I'm doing like a riverside scene, trying to get a lot of reflections in there. So I'm going to kick it off with a bit of raw sienna and a touch of lizarding crimson. Brush that in down there, reflects some of that in the water below. I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine, touch my water on the brush, bring the ears back together. I do separate a little bit as the brush dries. Brush some out colour again. Always like to brush it into the water below, the colour that I'm using above. You can do it afterwards if you like, but I just tend to do it at the same time. It's probably a lot easier. Now then, I'm going to pop in some, start some trees. Now these ones are quite far away, so I'm not worried too much about detail. Push down some sort of reflection. I'll come back to that shortly. More. Introducing a bit of lemon yellow into all of this as well. Let's get a bit more height in this. So I'm just looking for a general background of trees there. And then what I might start doing is You switch the sword line out and start putting a few twigs and branches and trunks and things in there. Some of these go right up, up in the reflections down at the same time. But it's quite faint at the moment. The stronger stuff will go on once the paper dries a little bit. Just looking for a mass of things growing up off this bank. sideways tweaks and branches and things. All those we need reflecting down below. And it's going a little bit darker. A bit of Payne's grey, a bit of lemon yellow. To the sword liner, a bit of pines, grey lizard, pretty much a bit of everything, and then just you can see it's going on a little bit stronger now because the paper's starting to dry. So we get some nice bit of depth in it because this is contrasting against the first stuff we put on, which is faded off as the paper's dried. just whack those reflections in straight away just so I don't forget it's so easy when you look at a finished painting and think oh god I forgot to put those reflections in and you just don't notice at the time also I'm just popping in a few they don't all go straight some go diagonally like that These, imagine these light ones just sort of catching catching the light <clears throat> and that's, that's enough on the left that's, that's what we're going to do on the right hand side um, so I'll come back to that in a minute in the meantime I'll just pull that flat against the board paper stretched a little bit <clears throat> um, now where's this 
what I'll do, I'll get a quick spray. Just loosens everything up, just keeps it all nice and loose and fresh. And um, now on this side, so I'm coming. I'm coming to something cutting across a little gap. Imagine like a little gap round there. Um, so I've got a few things up there, the reflections as well. Back to the sword liner. Pop in a few more. A few more trunks and things going on here. What I like about this brush, you can use the rig app, but I just like the way you, you, you don't have to keep reloading it every five seconds. You can also get quite a variety of, uh, of stroke widths. If I just press light like this, I can get almost pencil, pencil thin. Whereas if I press, press quite thick, you can see you can get quite a broad, broad stroke. Um, well, I want to pop a little bit of. A bit of yellow down the horizon, give the impression of like a, a rising sun or something. First, I'll have to clean this, clean this yellow first, I think. And then let's go back in. Imagine I'm still a little bit green, and a little bit green. Get a bit of red in there as well, I think. Really, actually, I should have done all this. It's a lot easier to do this at the start, which is why I'm now sort of fading a lot of it out. And the tissue, use whatever you want. Just a hint of something there on the horizon, and then what I sometimes do, I'll switch to a little quarter inch flat brush like that. So I'm just checking the, the video is still recording because unfortunately my camera switched off yesterday. I did video yesterday's painting, but for some reason the thing switched itself off and I was left with nothing. So I like to get some like some real dark, but I want the darks to be. This brush just comes in handy for this sort of thing. Just get some dark in. Um, you all stalled it at the end, like if you want to get more sort of random, more random, eh? And then if I just switch sides to the rigger, not the rigger, the sword, and then just flick, flick a few more things in there like that. Still very wet there, so I'll stick on this bit for a minute. And you can see it's going on nice and dark now, it's getting some nice contrast there. Um, I still want some. See what this looks like if I just go just a few things going on in the background don't know what they are just um, and then this again on some dark will come in Coming out at this sort of angle. It's 
that's sort of got some sort of darks going. Switch back to the sword liner. Let's reload this. Again, just flick, 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 flick. Don't forget those reflections down below. You can see now the, the first ones we've put in now, pushing, getting pushed right into the background as these stronger foreground ones go in. Just push this out a little bit like that, a few random things flying out. Make sure this is flat. I can't resist a few little rocks and things. Um, Very, very loose suggestion of, of fences and things going on. Um, I like a few sort of horizontal strokes as well, just something. I'm just whizzing around the palette. What I find is the quicker I do it and the less I think about it, the better that it tends to turn out. In my opinion, anyway, I mean, someone might be looking at this thinking it just looks a complete mess. I suppose, you know, we've all got our own tastes and personal preferences. I just like to whiz along as quick as I can. Just random marks here and there. I think something. I think something in the foreground might work. If we go back to the height brush. Um, if we started there, then we come a bit close. I'm thinking if we just bash in a few. I'm gonna have to dry this. Give it a quick dry. Another lay down here, I think. A little bit of, bit of green, bit of blue, bit of. Actually, you don't want to get too far with that. Just the impression of something in the foreground. soft all that's gone now so if I put some uh, some, some over the top of that just to contrast against those lighter ones behind it
I just want one sort of distinct darker area. So I'm just going to Very, very loosely trying to get the impression of a Birds, and then I'm just going to finish this one off with a just stick my name somewhere, somewhere out of the way. I'll stick my name down here somewhere and call this one done. So let's stick a mount on this and see what it looks like. So here's the finished painting, the mount. So if we're going to have a closer look at it, got a very simple sky, and you can see where I just added a little bit of light red and then I just toned it down a little bit because it, it was a little bit too strong then for the most part we've got on the left hand side got this mass of trees you, know, you can see where the, the original ones went in at first they've sort of faded off and then as we come closer we've got the stronger ones going across to create that sense of, sense of depth and then in amongst all the darks you can see a little bit of scraping just to suggest a few fence posts and things there where the light's just sort of catching them as they sit above the, the water's edges. All the reflections painted at the same time, so if we keep that consistency. And on the right hand side, same sort of thing. Again, you can see where the, the first few strokes when I put them in have faded away and then they contrast nicely against the stronger ones that have gone in afterwards with a sort of stronger, stronger mix. Again, a few little scrapes of the card suggest it will textures and things just random elements there on the banks very very simple little fisherman just put in there very light reflection and again all those reflections from the trees above it down below and then just another, giving it another layer so you can imagine you've sort of got 
there's your first layer, then another layer there, and then a third layer down here. Just adds to that sense of depth. Just some very loose grasses and reeds in the foreground, putting very, very simply. So that's it for another painting. Um, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please ask. And do please, if you get the chance, visit me over at patreon.com slash Stephen Cronin.